Hello, Nikki and Ashley here. Don't worry, we purposely did not add the title of our measure yet because we don't want you to have a biased view of the pictures we're about to show you. We're going to show you these three pictures. As we show you them, pay attention to how you feel. Try to think back on times when you may have felt what you see in the pictures. As I'm sure many of you were able to identify after viewing the pictures, our measure is about depression, anxiety, and stress. The measure is called the Depression, Anxiety, and Stress Scale 21, or for short, the DAS. The DAS. It is called the DAS 21 to reflect a shortened version of the original DAS 42. We chose this scale because depression, anxiety, and stress are very common in today's society. We hope seeing those pictures didn't stir up too many negative feelings, but we do hope that by taking a moment to reminisce on times when you may have felt depressed, anxious, or stressed, that you will better be able to relate to this measure. In order to gain a more precise understanding, we decided to focus specifically on depression. The reason we chose depression is because more than 17 million Americans suffer from this illness. Yes, 17 million people. Because so many people are affected by this, we wanted to ensure that one of the most popular assessments for depression was reliable and had high validity. Okay, so what is the subscale depression? This subscale is a self-report instrument. There are four response options ranging from zero, meaning did not apply to me at all, to three, meaning applied to me much or most of the time. The DAS subsection depression consists of seven items taken from the full version of the DAS. It is designed to measure if an individual has depression and how severe that depression is. Okay, so now what does it assess? The depression scale assesses dysphoria, anhedonia, hopelessness, self deprecation, and a lack of interest and involvement in life, coupled with an overall devaluation of life. How is this test administered? The DAS is usually administered in person, and there are no special skills needed to administer or score the DAS, although this should be done by a professional. The DAS can be taken online as long as it is not on a public domain, but rather restricted to a defined group, like individuals participating in a research study. Who takes the test? The DAS has been used with adolescents down to 14 years of age, but there is not much from that age range to confirm the validity of the scales. It is not recommended to use the DAS with children below 14 years because it is likely that some children would not fully understand all of the terms used. DAS is also used in a clinical setting to identify the severity of the core symptoms of depression as part of the broader task of clinical assessment. This test may also be given several times throughout the course of a treatment to keep track of the progress of the client. To find the internal reliability of the DAS-21, we decided to compare multiple studies. These studies included clinical and non-clinical samples, and one was done on a sample from different age groups that were over the age of 60. All of these studies use a Chromebacks coefficient. A Chromebacks coefficient above 0 0.70 is good, 0 0.80 and above is better, and 0 0.90 is the best. As you can see across studies, there appears to be comparable and high internal consistency for the DAS-21 ranging from 0.88 to 0.94. In our research, we found evidence of good convergent and discriminant validity. Here we are comparing the depression subscale of the DAS-21 to various other tests, including the Beck's depression inventory, Beck's anxiety inventory, Rosenberg self-esteem scale, and the SF health and well-being survey that is comprised of the mental health component summary and the physical health component summary. It is also compared to other subscales within the DAS-21 for the anxiety and stress. There's a big difference between the two studies, correlations with anxiety and stress subscales shown between the two studies. 
It could be because there's a bigger sample for the Sinclair study, but more research would be needed to would need to be done. According to these two studies, there's fairly good convergent validity between the Beck's depression inventory and the depression subscale of the DAS21 outlined in blue. Good divergent validity is also shown in the negative correlations in red between the depression subscale and the Rosenberg self-esteem scale and the mental health component measure. It makes sense that as self-esteem and mental health scores go down, depression might go up and vice versa. Almost no relationship is shown in purple with the correlation uh, with the SF uh, physical health component at 0.29. This would make sense because depression is more of a mental disorder rather than a measure of physical health. So these scales do not measure the same construct. It should also be mentioned that according to the study by Henry and Crawford in 2004, that the results from the DAS-21 strongly compared to results given with the already validated original DAS-42, also suggesting good convergent validity, making this scale shorter and therefore easier to administer to participants. Interestingly, while internal consistency was comparable across races in the study by Norton in 2007, for some reason, participants of Asian descent scored significantly higher on average than participants of African, Caucasian, Hispanic, Latina descent, who, did, who didn't differ from each other on the depression subscale. This might indicate that culture, especially a collectivistic culture, might have an effect on how they rate themselves on depression using the DAS-21. All right, so now for the strengths and weaknesses. Um, the biggest weakness that we found was cross-cultural research, research shows that Asians have higher levels of collectivism, which is believed to impact how individuals express emotion. When individuals care for their community more than themselves, then they are more likely to have high levels of neuroticism. Those with high neuroticism would naturally score higher on an assessment testing depression. Therefore, the results on the DOS test would have less to do with the individual's level of depression and more to do with their culture. Also, the translation of words in Asian languages have multiple meanings, which could lead to the test takers making inaccurate interpretation of the questions and therefore corrupting the results. Strengths include high internal reliability and concurrent indiscriminate validity. The DAS-21 is also a shorter version with comparable results of the original DAS-42, which could help with participant fatigue. It can also be used to measure the severity of symptoms and progress made for those going through tr treatment for depression. All right, so in summary, the DAS is a very important measure because of its because of the prevalence and seriousness of depression. Overall, DAS, subjects, the DAS subsection of depression is both reliable and valid. In the future, there should be more research done on Asian culture as far as the translation of the test and the effects of item interpretation by Asian cultures. And that concludes our presentation. Thanks for watching.